Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here with Gen Sense. How about we talk about a little clone action once again, but this time a little bit differently. Today we're gonna to be talking about niche fragrances that some people say are clones of other fragrances out there, whether other niche scents or designers. People love to throw out the term clone, even when sometimes I think it's not maybe the correct word to use. Sometimes I like to call a fragrance maybe inspired by another fragrance, which you could say is just a nicer way of saying clone, but I do differentiate between those two a bit. To me, a clone is a fragrance that's made just to ape another fragrance, just to completely do the exact same thing and smell exactly the same as that other fragrance and then to sell preferably at a lower price and get market share from people that maybe would have bought the original. Whereas an inspired by fragrance is where a company or a perfumer looks at another scent out there, a very popular scent DNA, and they say to themselves, huh, that's kind of interesting what they did there. Maybe I can build off of what they've done, change things, tweak things, introduce something new or whatever, and make my own idea off of their idea. All of this, this long drawn out thing is to say, I don't necessarily consider these myself to be clones, but I know a lot of you out there do. So let's jump into it. Let's check out some niche clones. All right, let's get it kicked off with the Nishane. <laughs> to be fair, there could be a few different Nishanes uh, that I put into this video, but we'll do just one. We'll do my newest one, which I reviewed on my Extra Sense channel here recently. It is Suede et Saffron. So this is not one of their more well-known fragrances, but this one I bought from Joma Shop, and I think it cost me right at $109. That was a pretty good deal, because it's not a tester, it's full presentation, the whole shebang. And if you shop at Joma Shop, use code GENS8, save yourself $8 off any order over 110. It's good for the whole site, good for everything on there. So what is this a take on, a take on me? What fragrance is this one very similar to, I should say? Well, it's very similar to Tom Ford's Tuscan leather. And I mentioned this in the review of the fragrance as well, but it's not really a surprise at this point when you look at the current presentation for the bottle and it's the same color scheme as the Tom Ford private blend fragrances. It's just, it's just right. It just feels right. So this fragrance, when you smell it from the atomizer, you spray it on your skin, you'll know. You'll know right away, yeah. That smells pretty close to Tuscan leather. It's one of those unmistakable scent profiles. As soon as you smell it, you know what it is. And there are a lot of companies out there, to be fair, that do have fragrances that smell like Tuscan leather, not just Nishani. Where this differs is this one has more of an added emphasis on saffron and suede, hence the name. So you don't have as much of that fruitiness in the opening, don't really have any. Instead, it's supplanted by additional saffron. So you have a fragrance here that's a very smooth leather scent with the warm, spicy sweetness to it. Smells fantastic. I really like that one. Let's go from one I really like to one I, I don't really like all that much. It's from Creed and it's original Santal. Yes, my bottle is quite low. That's not because I wore it that much. It's because years ago, I decanted most of this out because I, I didn't really care to wear it. Never been a big fan of original Santal. Actually, a lot of my fragrance friends, they uh, call this unoriginal Santal. I know it's very, uh, very witty because this smells very similar to Mont Blanc's Individuelle, like really, really similar. And then Creed also has original vetiver, unoriginal vetiver, which smells similar to Mugler Cologne. Yes, yes. Way to go, Creed. So original Santal essentially is a much more expensive, exquisite, opulent take on a $25 fragrance. And because it is similar to Individual, that also means it's similar to Yope Ohm, although it is much more wearable than the Yope, so it does have that going for it, I guess. Quite a sweet fragrance, and uh, the sweetness in here just never worked for me all that much. It gave me kind of a cough syrupy vibe that I just couldn't really get with. Although I know a lot of people out there do love that one and say that it works wonders on their skin, uh, but for me it just never did, unfortunately. Up next, probably the least, actually definitely the least known fragrance 
out of everything I'm going to talk about here today. It's from Odin, New York. It is 11. The official name is 11 Sima, I believe. S-E-M-M-A. M-M-A. Least martial arts. There was a time that a lot of fragrances from this house you could find at discounters for a great discounted price, which is when I picked this one up. I think that at the time I probably paid 55 or $60 US for it. Uh, it's not as easy to find nowadays, unfortunately. It's a really nice tobacco fragrance. It's got warm spiciness to it. it smells of good quality. Really nice choice for fall and winter time. And it smells similar to Burberry's London. Also a little bit of a similarity to uh, Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb, the original Spice Bomb, but closer overall to London. So once again, you have a, a fragrance here, a niche fragrance smelling similar to a designer fragrance, which is usually pretty cheap at discounters. Now to be fair, when you have so many fragrances out there, thousands and thousands of fragrances and so many new ones coming out constantly, and you know that nobody can smell all of these, right? Like nobody can just go through and put every single fragrance the exact way it smells into their brain and know, okay, that's exactly how that one smells. I will never copy that ever. I will never make anything that smells remotely like that. That's just not possible. So with so many fragrances coming out, you know there's gonna be overlap. So again, I'm not saying that these houses are, or perfumers are just going, oh, I'm gonna rip that off. It's just the nature of the beast. But yeah, this smells similar to London regardless. Although, like I said, it does smell really good. So if you can find this for a nice price, check it out if you want a, a good, under the radar niche tobacco scent. Now one that pretty much everybody should know. It's from Bond number no. nine. It is Bleecker Street. This is my favorite fragrance from Bond number no. nine. This is the one that I've worn the most. I have three bottles of the stuff, two 100 mils and 150 mil, and it smells like Ralph Lauren's Purple Label, which I also own because I like this scent profile a lot. This is a killer springtime fragrance. Love the way it smells. It's grassy, it's fresh, it's obviously green. It has blueberry in the top, giving it an interesting uh, fruity sweetness. As it dries down, you get this suede that comes out, which gives it a nice masculine edge. I think Bleecker Street rules. Like most Bond number no. 9s, it has a little synthetic edge to it, but it doesn't bother me at all. And it does have better performance than Purple Label, so there is that. So, I mean, that's good, right? I just came up with a new idea while I was sitting here uh, just now. Top 10 fragrances that Dua has not cloned yet. Is that even possible to be made? Is that, I don't know. It could be my hardest list that I have ever come up with in my life. All righty, let's keep it going with Parfums de Marley, Pegasus. This one smells similar to Hypnotic Poison from Dior. And in case you're unaware, Hypnotic Poison is a fragrance made for the ladies. Now, to be fair, Pegasus and Hypnotic Poison don't smell the exact same, but there is a definite similarity between the two, and my wife does own Hypnotic Poison, and I have been able to compare side by side. They're pretty close. Close enough that you can smell this and Hypnotic Poison and go, yep. I know what people are talking about. Even if I don't think they smell the exact same, I definitely know what people are talking about when they compare the two. And that does kind of show to an extent that a lot of how somebody perceives a fragrance is how it's marketed. This is marketed toward men, so people smell Pegasus and they go, oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely a dude's fragrance. Then they smell Hypnotic Poison, obviously marketed toward women, and you go, oh, very feminine. And a lot of that is to do with how the fragrance is presented. Now, sometimes you're gonna have a fragrance that's very obviously super masculine, very obviously super feminine, as far as how the fragrance comes across, how most people are going to interpret that. But when you have a fragrance that could be considered unisex, a lot of it is gonna be based on how the brand pitches it to you. This one most well known for its almond note. And uh, truthfully, Pegasus is not one of my favorite Parfums de Marly fragrances, probably in the lower third or something across the entire brand. I just never really fell in love with it. Actually, I think Pegasus Exclusif is much better than this. So Pegasus Exclusif, I would go for. I think that's uh, more well done, more interesting, but still yet Pegasus similar to Dior's Hypnotic Poison. Then we're gonna go with the Zerzhov next. We're gonna go with Mephisto. This smells similar to Creed's Silver Mountain Water. Now, it's not the case as much now, but when Serzhov first broke, when they were first kind of 
coming into their own, a lot of their fragrances had similarities to other scents out there. Maybe not the exact same, but again, that inspiration that I talked about before, you could smell that in a lot of Zerzhov releases and go, oh, well, this one smells a bit like that, and this one smells a bit like that. Not all of them, but a lot of them you could. They've kind of grown out of that a little bit as time has gone on, but around the time that this came out, that's what was happening with a lot of their stuff. So with this one, you have a lot of citrus, you have floral notes in here, you have woods and musk in the base. It does not have as much of that uh, black tea kind of feeling that you're gonna get from Silver Mountain Water, which really does help set that one off and differentiate between the two. But Mephisto does still undeniably smell similar to Creed Silver Mountain Water. And then lastly, we're gonna go over one from Tiziana Terenzi. It is Ursa, smells similar to Straight to Heaven from By Killian. Terenzi is another house that has a number of releases that have similarities to other things out there. This is an extract to parfum fragrance, really good performance. It does smell very nice. Gotta say, boozy, sweet, woody, fruity, really high quality stuff. And the presentation, I, I do dig actually. The atomizer here is nice. Uh, the bottle itself, pretty basic, but then the cap more than makes up for it. Super heavy, really nicely detailed, a metallic hockey puck cap. Nice. Ursa though, definitely shares some strong similarities to Straight to Heaven, which is one of the first fragrances that I really recognized by Killian for. It's one of the first ones that got a huge amount of hype that kind of caught my attention. And it was the first one from by Killian that I really wanted myself. So there we go, seven niche fragrances that are clones of other fragrances out there. And there are uh, frankly a whole bunch of other scents that I could have put in here, but didn't. Maybe we'll do a follow-up at some point. I don't know. All right, guys, I want to thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Let me know in the comments some other niche fragrances that are inspired by other fragrances out there, whether designer or niche or indie. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.